My name is Paul Yule, and I am the MIDI guru of Chase Plus Audio. I'm the way out west guy. I don't actually live in Minnesota. I'm located in Tacoma, Washington, where I've been working with Chase Plus Audio for over five years now. So that's kind of a funny title. What does the MIDI guru do? When you, the user of MIDI, get into trouble and send us an email, it lands in my inbox. I do my very best to help you get things working right. I feel like most of these issues could be solved in no time at all if I could only just come and visit you at your space. But since we can't do that, I try to do the next best thing. This could involve building a duplicate of your rig using things that I have around here, then troubleshooting it as if I was using your rig. Sometimes the simplest thing can be hard to translate over an email, and a Zoom call can just solve it in a matter of seconds. Like people will tell me their setup. Oh, did we lose our... Oh, you just came go. back. I gotcha. Some of these MIDI controllers, they have where you can save whatever settings you've programmed in your MIDI controller. You can save that as a backup file, and I can duplicate the whole setup at home. It's like I'm in the room with them, literally, because I have the exact same setup they have. One of my favorite things to do is making videos to help explain different MIDI-related aspects of using our pedals. All right, one of the most common questions I see from those of you that are new to MIDI, how do I save a preset? I mean, it's probably not as exciting as one would think. I really just start my day like anyone, put my pants on one leg at a time kind of guy. Head on downstairs and see what the day's got for me. Things are pretty slow until I get that first cup of coffee. Ah, there we go. First thing I do is check that to-do list. Make sure there isn't anything from the day before that I didn't get done. Some people think it's funny that I keep a list and stuff, but I just like to do things the old-fashioned way. Oh look, mail's here. Looks like some customers are having trouble with their MIDI again. I like to read all the mail I get from my customers. Some are really funny. I like those ones the best. So this is my workspace. Um, just restored a 1938 a metronome with a neon bulb. This is the first Chase Bliss pedal I ever bought. Ready? Bought a Warp Vinyl Mark II, and I was just kind of getting into MIDI at that time, you know, five years ago. So I email the company, can I just make a cable that's like five pin MIDI on one side and TRS on the other side? Joel emails me back like the same night. And I was like, wow, Joel's emailing me, this is cool. He says, eh, it's not gonna work. And I was like, well, am I gonna hurt anything if I try it? And he says, no, you're not gonna hurt anything, but I'm just telling you right now, don't even bother, it's not gonna work. This is the place where cables get made. It's not gonna work is kind of music to my ears because I like to make it happen against all odds, right? So at first I was like, I'm just gonna look online. There's gotta be some diagram or schematic or something. And I looked and then I quickly realized that I don't read diagrams and schematics. So I got a little scientific. Let's try red and purple push the button and it didn't work. Did it smoke? No. Now of course life goes this way and it's always going to be the last one that you try. So it turned out that it was black and green. When I went to fire it up, aha! The preset changed. The wiring diagram was found and it worked. We have the middies. I made a little video showing Joel like, well, here's how I did it and it's working fine. And he's like, huh, you got that to work. You look like you could make a video and you're coherent and you look like you know what you're talking about. You, you want a job? I was like, uh, okay. I have one, but I'll have, I'll take another one. <laughs> I mean, who'd say no to that? No one's MIDI problems are too big or too small. They're all the same to me and they deserve all of my attention. I don't always know the answer right away, and I'm not afraid to look stuff up to help people. And actually, the problems that I don't know the answer to right away are my favorite of all. Because it's a learning experience for both of us. 
I'm not above learning something new with MIDI. Then we get that problem solved and it's off to the mail we go. I also find myself doing lots of other things on a regular basis. Working to develop new devices, testing hardware and firmware upgrades, designing MIDI functionality, working on a beta team, so many different things. Downtown Tacoma at this old antique shop. I'm just gonna go play some Chase Bliss pedals. Honestly, for me, since I've been working from home this entire time, things aren't that different. Probably the only real change for me is the fact that we're not hanging out. I usually get to see these guys two or three times a year. We all keep up on Slack right now, which helps a lot, but it's no replacement for those quality times spent telling funny stories and sharing a beer. But we'll get there again someday. We decided it was time for a road trip. Time to head to Portland to see Chris. built an amp for me, um, one of the first uh, Vinny Reverb combo amps. You want to try it out? Yeah. I really love hearing from all of you. And I know that you appreciate my replies. MIDI can be rather intimidating sometimes, but it's also really fun to find solutions to all these problems. Tying up all these loose ends and helping everyone, it's super satisfying. Thank you so much for trusting me all these years to be your MIDI guru. I promise I'll never let you down. This thing is sick. <laughs> Thank you.